Hi, everyone. Start in about six minutes. Hi, if you have a block, um, if you don't have one, it's okay too, but if you have a block, that'd be probably your best prop. If you don't have that, you could use a book or a box. And if you don't have that, you could um, use a blanket even. So we'll start in about two minutes.
All right, we're going to start in less than a minute. Okay, again, one last time, if you have a block, go ahead and grab it. If you don't, um, I would say a box or some books if you need, if you have a blanket. But if you don't have a block, it's not totally necessary. It's just helpful. And anything to elevate your hips. Hi, and welcome to Heartland Yoga. My name is Heather, and I teach the 5.30 Tuesday night class. Um, glad you are all here. Happy Friday, if I didn't already say that. Um, so I always do a theme to my class, and most of my themes have been, you know, mostly grounding because of all the energy that's going around us in the world. Um, but I've been feeling like pretty stuck lately and not just like stuck in my house physically, but more emotionally and um, mentally, um, not feeling very creative, not feeling very motivated these days. So um, I decided that it it, at least for me, I need some energy in my life, like some calming energy. And that's one of my favorite things about yoga is, is this energy we get, but it, it's very calming. It's not this adrenaline rush. It's, it's, it's just like almost this perfect um, energizing feeling that I, I love. And, and not saying that the grounding practice can be energizing, at the same time, it's going to be a little more physical tonight, but you have the option of um, not making it so physical. So we'll do several vinyasa, vinyasas, and if you'd rather be in a down dog or a child's pose, you'll have that option. But I just feel like if we have the opportunity to um, get our mind going and our body going in this yoga energy way that will be more creative, will be more productive. Now, I'm, I'm usually needing the groundedness because I'm not, I'm not, I do not sit down and be super productive all the time, but um, I've just been feeling very lethargic and, and just really not willing to do a lot of things at this point. So, uh, lots of energy through breath today and um, flow. So I'm going to show you when I say, hey, we're going to go into a vinyasana. Vinyasa? I can't say I'm having a hard time with that word. I'm just going to show you what that looks like. So if I say you can take a vinyasa or you can um, down dog or child's pose. So we're always being down dog. And so you can stay here. You can slip into a child's pose. Or if I say now you can take a vinyasa, you can come to plank and then come all the way down, cobra, and then back to down dog. We'll meet down dog. Or if you want to plank, chaturanga, up dog, down dog next. And so if you want a little more energizing practice, you will do the vinyasas most of the time. If you <laughs> sort of want to lay back and relax, then you go into child's pose or down dog. So it's up to you. We are going to start by um, sitting on our back of our heels. And I'm going to use the block because we're going to be here for a little bit. We'll take a break and then we'll come back to this pose. If you don't need a block, no problem. If for some reason 
You cannot sit this way. It hurts your knees, your hips, and just get into easy pose. Okay, great. So hopefully we're all there. As long as you're in a comfortable seated position. Okay, and I invite you to uh, go ahead and close your eyes so we can land in the space and become present. So closing your eyes. Now making sure that our posture is, um, <laughs> our posture is good so that we are feeling at ease. So long, tall spine, think about a string pulling the spine through the crown of the head. As we have that long, tall spine, drop the shoulders, allow them to relax. Allow them to relax even more. Slight tuck of the chin. Now take notice of the room and the space that you're in. Take notice of the noise, maybe the white noise, or maybe you have the vent for the AC running. Take notice of the temperature of the room. Bring awareness to your body and how it feels on the mat or on the floor or on the prop. I'm inviting you for the next 70 minutes to allow yourself to be and feel rather than think and plan. So bring awareness to the breath. Making the inhale and the exhale a little bit longer, deeper. Begin to listen to the breath. Now take notice of the inhale versus the exhale. Noticing if one is longer or easier. So we're gonna begin by counting the inhale and the exhale. We'll do even breath and then we'll make the inhale just a little bit longer. The inhale gives us some energy, the exhale is for relaxation. So I'll start to count. You don't have to do any of the counting right now. So let's inhale, three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Inhale, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, three, two, one. Inhale, six, five, four, three, two, one, exhale, three, two, one. Go ahead and continue with the exhale being a little bit longer, but come back one count. So we were at six, back to five, then four, and then eventually all the way to four. So while you're continuing to come back to that even breath, I'm gonna do just a little reading. It says the entire outside world is based on your thoughts and mental attitude. The entire world is your own projection. Your values may change within a fraction of a second. Today, you may not even want to see the one who was your sweet honey yesterday. If we remember that, we won't put so much stress on outward things. That is why yoga does not bother much about changing the outside world. 
There's a saying, as the mind, so the person. Bondage or liberation are in your own mind. If you feel bound, you are bound. If you feel liberated, you are liberated. Things outside neither bind nor liberate you. Only your attitude toward them does that. So I realize this is sort of an exceptional time, but it's a good reminder that we have the choice. Go ahead and take this moment to think of a word or a phrase to set your intention for your practice. It could be answering the question, why did I show up today? I'll be coming back to liberation. Bring an awareness to your posture and sit up tall on the inhale, exhale, chin to chest. Inhale, and come back up, right ear towards right shoulder. Now think about relaxing those shoulders again. It gives us a little more space when we relax. Inhale back to center, left ear towards left shoulder. Again, it allows us some space if we relax the shoulder. Inhale, right ear, right ear towards right shoulder. If you'd like a little more sensation, create more space by placing the right hand on the left shoulder. You just place it, again, creating more space, which creates more sensation. Release the hand, inhale back to center, left ear towards left shoulder, and place that left hand on the right shoulder. Again, just placing so we create that space, which then creates a little more sensation. Releasing the hands, bringing the hands to the shoulders, we rotate the shoulders back. So for some reason, if your hands feel like that's hard for you to do or you don't like it, you don't need them there. To me, this gives me a little bit more control. And then forward. Hands make their way to the heart. So we open the chest, we open the heart. Shoulders come back and down. Taking our hands back to back for wrist rotation. So back to back and then we rotate our wrists and then our palms come together. Again, hands back to back, rotate, hands come together, palms. One more time up, palms face each other, arms spread apart, fingers spread apart, and then we fist. Open, and we do that 10 times. After that 10th one, palms come together. We come back down, back to back, hands. One wrist rotation. This will be number two, and this will be number three, back to the heart. Come back to your intention. Liberation. Go ahead and remove the prop if you had a prop. And make your way into all, onto on all fours or tabletop. I just like to sway the hips, loosen them up a little bit first. Then having the fingers on the mat and the thumb, we lift our left palm up. Trying to keep the fingers and thumb down. We do that five times. Second side, right hand. We try to keep the fingers and the thumb on the mat. Do that five times. Um, it's very noticeable which one's easier for me. Swaying the hips a little more. Our right hand comes a little closer to center. 
Inhale, arm comes up. We gaze towards that left hand. Wrist rotation, five one way, and then five the other way. Inhale, we lengthen up even longer. Exhale, thread the needle. Left temple comes to the mat. Right hand can come out straight. Connect with the breath and then decide if you need a little more twist. Start to gently move the shoulder and then maybe twist a little more so the back of the head is more on the mat. We release gently out of the pose, swaying the hips. Left hand makes it a little bit closer to the center. Right arm, inhale, we lift up. Knees goes towards that hand. Rotation with the wrists five times. And then switch the other way. Inhale, lengthen up that arm, exhale, thread the needle. Placing that right temple on the mat and then that left arm can come out long. If that does not feel comfortable, you can bend it. Find your breath, connect with the breath. And make adjustments. So maybe you uh, move your shoulder a little bit under and then the back of the head comes more towards the mat. Release the pose back to tabletop, sway in the hips. If you had a block, find that block again. We're gonna sit back on our heels again. If, again, this does not work for you, please to go back to easy pose. And you can do this in easy pose. So it's a variation of cat-cow. Hands on thighs, palms facing down. We inhale, round this, I mean, inhale, arch the back, gaze goes towards the ceiling. Squeezing the shoulder blades in, exhale, round the spine, tuck the chin, inhale to cow. Exhale, catch, round the spine, tuck the chin, inhale to cow. Shoulder blades come back, shoulders drop from the ears, exhale, round the spine. Go back and forth at your own pace, your own breath. Do two more. After that second one, neutral spine, so long, tall spine. Placing that right, the right fingertips, depending if you're on the block or not, or not you might be able to place your whole hand. Let's start with the fingertips. Left arm raises up, do side body stretch. See if you get that arm closer to, the bicep closer to the ear. Really think about breathing into this um, side rib cage here. Couple breaths, switching to the other side. Just notice if this side is a little bit different, it's a lot different for me. Breathing into the rib cage, creating space here as well. Own breath, own pace, so just kind of go back and forth. You can pause as much as you need to. may need to give a little extra love to certain spots. Oh, 
ahead and go one more round. Hands make their way back to the thighs. Long, tall spine. I'm gonna go ahead and do Kalabhati breath. I can never say it. Um, that is that forceful exhale and that's the pumping of the stomach. So we inhale, but we use the exhale as if we're blowing out a candle with the exhale. I'll demonstrate. This really gives us energy. So we're gonna do three rounds of 36. For, for any reason that this gives you anxiety, you can just go back to Ujjayi breath. So the demonstration first, inhale, and then I'm gonna exhale three fourths out and then I'm gonna pump my stomach. So the exhale is coming out of the nostrils. The inhale you do not have to worry about. You also do not have to worry about counting. I'll do um, counting. So if we're a little off, it's okay, but I'll do most of the counting. Um, again, three rounds of 36. We're all gonna take a big inhale and an exhale out, and then we'll, we'll, we'll begin the kalabha. I say. Inhale all together. Exhale the whole thing out. <sighs> Letting go. Long, tall spine. Inhale. Exhale three fourths out. Start to pump. more. Go ahead and pause. So maybe you're feeling sensation in the crown of your head. Maybe you're feeling some heat right now. If for some reason you do not want to like have snot flying everywhere, totally understand, then again, go back to the Ujjayi breath or if this gives you any sort of anxiety. This time, same, uh, we're gonna do uh, 36 uh, exhales, but we're gonna bring our arms up, thumbs in, and then go ahead and place or fist your hands. So here we go, we'll do it together. Inhale, exhale, three force the breath out, and begin to pump. Five more. Hands come to thighs. Pause. All right, one last time. Your choice, hands on thighs, hands in the air, or you take your hands and place them between your shoulder blades. So we have this throat lock. If that's not comfortable, just choose your hands. Inhale together. Exhale three fourths and pump. Five more. Hands come to thighs, pause. Take a moment, feel the sensation. Soften the face. All right, again, removing the prop. This time you can place it just over to the side. We'll use it maybe later. Tabletop position, swaying the hips a little bit. Okay. 
going to go ahead and demonstrate. We're going to do a flow between cat, I'm sorry, cow, cat, down dog, cow, and then child's pose. Sounds more complicated than it is. So I'll demonstrate and then we'll do it together. Inhale to cow, exhale around the spine with cat, down dog. Inhale, drop the knees to cow. Exhale, round the spine and back to child's pose. So we're not worried about our knees being wide. We just come here. We'll do that five times. If you want to stay with me, you're welcome to. I'll cue, otherwise you can do it your own breath, your own pace. Inhale to cow. Exhale, round the spine. Cat, downward facing dog. Inhale, we drop the knees to cow. Exhale, round the spine from child's pose. Inhale to cow. Exhale, round the spine. Down dog. Knees come down. Inhale to cow. Exhale, round spine, child's pose. Number three, inhale. Exhale, down dog. Knees drop, inhale, cow. Exhale, round spine, child's pose. Inhale to cow. Exhale, round spine to down dog. Dropping the knees, inhale to cow. Exhale, round the spine, child's pose. Last one, if you're going with me, inhale to cow. Exhale, down dog. Knees come down, inhale to cow. Exhale, down the spine, child's pose. Coming back to the tabletop, make your way into down dog. Enjoy some movement here, so go ahead and cut out your legs, tiptoe, sway your hips. Good alignment, fingers spread wide, fingers pressing into the mat, eyes pressing back. Triceps hug in, head heavy, shake your head yes. Walking the feet to meet the hands, we come into that forward fold. Go ahead and bend the knees a little bit if you want a low back stretch rather than a hamstring. And then start to feel your head get heavy, your shoulders relax, your arms letting go. Side to side movement, everything letting go. Bringing the hands to the shins, we lift up halfway. So flat back, gaze goes towards the horizon. That's the inhale, the exhale is the fold. Let's do that again. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold. And then from here, we slowly rose, rise up. One vertebrae at a time, head comes last. Oh, shoulders roll back. If you're not at the front of the mat, go ahead and make your way there. Here we're going to get some energy in the upper torso. So allowing your torso to twist, keeping your hips in this kind of still position. So the top part. And allow your arms just to flail and let go. If you'd like, make more conscious movements with the arms, tapping the shoulders, waking up the shoulders. Faster, if you'd like. All 
right, start to wind back down slowly. Hands make their way to the heart. So this is when we come back to the breath. So I want you really to find that Ujjayi breath. Long, deep breaths. Also come back to the intention that you set earlier. Coming back to liberation. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Step back to down dog. Inhale, right leg comes high. We pull all the way through. We're in that low lunge. Widen the base so you might want to move that right foot over. Come up, hands to hips. So this is going to deal with strength and balance. So ground down your hips. Make sure your hips are square. That means that might, your hip might be jetting out, but you want them square to whatever room, what side of the room you're pointing to right now. Square hips. You're going to inhale, straighten both legs. Exhale, come down. Notice your knee and your ankle should be in line. Inhale, we come back up. Exhale, sit down. Going at your own breath, your own pace. Inhales on the up, exhales on the way down. Feeling that hip flexor stretch. Strength and balance. Right. Hands come either side of the foot. We step back to down dog. So here's your choice. You could stay in down dog, child's pose, or go through the vinyasa. Either way, we'll meet and down dog. All right, hopefully we're all back and down dog. Left arm leg kicks out, pulls all the way through. Taking that left foot over to the side, just to get a little more balance. Hands come to hips, rounding down the hips. Inhale, we lengthen so the legs are straight. Exhale, come down, noticing your knee and your ankle. Inhale, we come up. Exhale, down. Go ahead and go at your own pace, using the breath. The inhale is for lengthening, the exhale is for deepening. All right, hands come either side of the foot. We step back to down dog. Your choice, vinyasa, down dog, or child's pose. Meeting in down dog. Walking the feet to the hands. Inhale, we lift up halfway. Exhale, hold. Rising up, inhale, arms come up. Exhale, hands come to the heart. Find your breath here. Turn to your intention or liberation. Second sun salutation. Inhale. Exhale down. Inhale, halfway lift. Thighs press back. Gaze towards the rising. Exhale, fold. Step back to down dog. Left leg kicks high. We pull all the way through. Again, widening our stance for more balance. Coming up to press into a warrior. Think about those hips being square. Square to the front. If, if this helps, think of them as having two headlights, your hip bone, and they're shining straight ahead. 
Okay, rounding down first. Arms rise up, they float. Our shoulders stay away from our ears. And we do the same thing. We inhale, exhale down. Strengthening and balancing. Strong mind, strong body. Balance body, balance mind. When you're ready, hands come either side of the foot. Sit back down dog. Your choice. Vinyasa, down dog, your child's pose. Meeting and down dog. I think we do the right leg this time, pull all the way through. Yeah, widening your stance for balance. First round down. Remember those two headlights at your hip bones. Float the arms up, check in with your shoulders away from ears. Begin moving. Inhale, straighten the legs. Exhale down. Find your breath, your pace. Balance and strength. One more. Hands come either side of the foot, step back to down dog. Stay here or go through the knots. Meeting him down dog. Feet walk to meet the hands. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Big roll up, standing big arms, inhale. Hands make their way to the heart. Return to that even breath. So find the inhale and the exhale, and make them even. Back to the intention. Liberation. Inhale, last one. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. The back to down dog. Right leg kick climb. Pulling all the way through. I lunge. Get your balance. Widen your stance if you need to. Ground the hips first. Find those square hips. We're going to need them later. Tuck the pelvis under, your left cheek. So arms can either float up, stay here, or we can open up the heart by clasping the hands. The gaze can come towards the ceiling a little bit if that's going to um, require a little more focus. If you want, you can keep your focus on the floor. Find a drishti. Now start to move up and down. Knees can't be up now. All right, releasing the hands, either side of the foot, we come back to down dog. You decide what you want, but eventually meeting a down dog. Left leg kicks high, pull all the way through. Second side, find your wide stance for balance. Find your square hips. Round down first. Your decision on your arms. They can float up, stay here, or clasping the hands behind you. Again, it's more back then if you want to gaze towards the ceiling. Now begin, up and down, inhale comes up, exhales to down. Mm 
Louise Mann, either side of the foot. So this will be the last one if you want to take it. Otherwise, stay in down dog or child's pose. Inhale. Meeting in down dog. Hands or feet meet the hands. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Big roll up standing. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, hands make their way back to the heart. Find your breath. Back to the intention. Liberation. Coming into a wide stance, you might have to switch your direction, or maybe you have two mats like I do. Um, coming into Warrior Two, my, one of my favorite poses because it's such a strong pose. Let's set this up correctly. Heel in line with the arch of the back foot. Sinking in to that front leg. As you sink in, think about tucking the pelvis under just slightly. You don't have to like really push, but just slightly tuck it under. And then think about pressing out on this back foot. So we have this nice, even energy flow. So yeah, we know this leg's working. We wanna make sure we know this leg is working. So you can even feel your muscle. Inhale, your arms up. So float them up. They should be not a lot of energy here. Gaze goes over that middle front finger and drop the shoulders back. Think about your arms being, are they in line with each other? So nice, strong legs. Now we take and place that forearm on right above the knee. Inhale, we lift up, see how much space we create, and then we come up over. So we feel that side body stretch opening up here and here. Breathing into the ribs. Really opening up here. If you want, go ahead and drop, drop that left hand. It might be opposite to you, but whatever hand this is, drop it. And you get another new sensation, a little more opening here and in your hips. This is not available, just stay with the forearm. All right, come back to warrior two. Now let's straighten this front leg, give yourselves a break. Pop out the hip. You may want to use a block here. Trikonasana, a triangle. So allow your chest and heart to open here. It's almost a twist going on here if you do it that way. Gaze can go towards that hand or the ceiling. Bend that front knee. Back to warrior two. And then let's flip the foot forward. Come into a wide forward fold. So tuck the pelvis under, hands on hips. Go ahead and fold forward. Bring the toes in a little bit, like maybe 45 degrees. Allow your head to hang. Shake your head yes. Fingers walk out in front of you. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, hold. Hands come to hips, thighs press back, and come up. Other side. So warrior two, flipping this back, or flipping this foot forward. This should be just right, heel in line with arch. Again, thinking about both legs working. We know, we feel it here. You also want to feel it in this leg, okay? So strong legs, feel the muscles. Float the arms up. Gaze goes towards that middle finger, drop the shoulders. Middle front finger. Strong Virajasana too. Now we come into side and we'll place that forearm here. Again, we're creating space here in the side body. Lift up and then bring the arm over. Gaze goes towards that pinky. So create that space. Think about really breathing into the ribs here. 
And then if you want, you can go ahead and place this arm down. If that feels good. I've got a little wall to help me. If it doesn't feel good, then go back to the forearm. Nice hip opener, maybe even a little bit of a shoulder opener. And then come back to warrior two. Now I'm injured on this side a little bit, so I'm definitely going to need this for triangle. Straighten this front leg, kick out that back hip, and then place your fingers on the block, or you could even place them on right by the ankle or come down to the floor. Open up. Open up the chest with a little bit of a twist here. Gaze goes towards the ceiling. Knee bends. Back to warrior two. Point both feet forward. And then heel toe together. All right. Warrior three. Um, there's plenty of ways to see it in warrior three. This might be a little bit different for you. I'm just going to place this here for insurance, which means if I need it, it's there. If I don't, I'm fine. So let's get balanced in our left foot. Think about the four points of an X. X on the bottom of your foot, and those four points start to balance. I go ahead and bend the right knee, and then you have your hand in the foot, foot in the hand, and you want to bring your uh, belly button towards your spine. Tuck your pelvic bone so you can now feel a quad stretch. So this left arm raises up. Uh, it's almost as if we're about ready to go to the dancer. You start to bend over. You release gently the back foot. Hands come to the heart. Start to bend over. Pull the belly button into the spine so you have that space. The back foot is flexed. Drop the hips, square the hips. So this is what I've been talking about. Square your hips down. Hold here. Gaze goes towards the floor. Neck is in line with spine. You can move the arms out here if you'd like. I'm going to stay here. Pull the belly button in. Drop the hip. Now come through without touching down. This knee comes up to a 90. Now we release. So it was there for insurance, I didn't need it, now walk it out. We'll do the other side, warrior three. All right, so now we get the right foot. Find that X in those four points, see where your balance is. Driving on to the left foot. Pull the belly button into the spine, okay. Tuck the pelvis under, so it's this nice quadrant. The knees are in line. Right arm comes up. And then we act as if we're going to the dancer, but we release gently the foot. We make our way into warrior three. So you can see how my hip is in square. I'm going to square the hip and then pull the belly button up. Gives me more space. Flex the back foot. Ease goes towards the floor. Hold it here. Find your breath. Also put your arms out. One more breath and then come through without touching down. Time to breathe. Release. Shake it out. Okay, how many people love half moon? I didn't like it at all, but I got, I got better at it. So we try half moon. If you have a wall, you could do it on the wall. You would do the exact same thing I'm doing. You would just place. That's half moon on the wall. So if you have a wall that works wonders. If you don't have a wall, or you don't want to use a wall, let's try it here. We're going to start with the left side, so place the block up and over. I'm guaranteeing you have to adjust it because everybody's body is so different. So it's going to be up and over of your left foot. Right foot, it's almost like warrior one, but we have to make sure we square our hip. Okay? So warrior one legs, square your hips. We tiptoe this back foot up, okay? Right hand on right hip, and then we just bend down. 
you pick up the back leg. See, I might have to move this according to where I'm at. So flex that foot, flex the butt, you lift up the arm. Here's half moon with the block. Paris, keep the block if you love it. If you want to try, you can slip it out of the way. Fingertips are on the mat. Open up that hip. Open up the heart. So you're not putting a lot of pressure on the fingertips. Whatever way you are at, if you're on the wall, if you're on the block, you still just want to bend that front knee and drop down. And your knees don't move back. <laughs> Walk it out. Same thing, other side. So right, the, yeah, we're on the right side. Right and over of that foot. Where are your one set? So get those hips square. Been squaring our hips all day. Pick up that back foot, tiptoe it up. Hand stays on there, left hand. And then we just bend over. We don't even have to have the balance here yet. Then we open up the hip, lift up that leg, spread the toes, flex the foot. Arm comes up, half moon. Stay on the block. If you love it, stay, stay there. Otherwise, you could drop down. I'm going to stay there on this side. Dealing with this muscle issue. One more breath. Wherever you're at, bend that knee and drop down. Okay, you can walk that out too. Jog it out, walk it out, dance it out. When you're ready, come to the front of the mat. Hands make their way back to the heart. Return to your breath. Liberation. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, swan dive down. Step back to down dog. Knees come down. Make our way into child's pose. So big toes come together, we sit back on our heels. I always like to do this first because that's where we're going. We want to be pushing back as we're reaching out. So go ahead and walk your hands out, forehead comes to the mat. Bring awareness to the breath. So this is a point where you can sort of let it go. So it doesn't have to be so long and deep. You can just allow yourself to relax on the breath. Making your way to tabletop, swaying the hips a little bit. Go ahead and curl your toes under and then start to bring your chin down first to the mat so you can feel your shoulder blades coming together and then your chest and then just scoop back and then roll over on your back. Bringing your knees into your chest. Possibly a little low back roll. Feet come down. Bring our heels close to our buttocks so we can lift up for bridge pose. We're going to do it five times, just three breaths a piece. So we're kind of going in, a, in and out of the flow. So if you roll your shoulders under, that might take away from the flow, but it's up to you. So inhale, we lift the pelvis, three breaths. Drop that down. Inhale, lift the pelvis, three breaths here. Thinking about adjusting your head and your neck so you're not straining it. 
Come back down. Third one, lift up, pelvis comes up, reroute. Come back down. Fourth one for me, if you're doing it at your own pace, your own breath, that's fine. This will be the last one for me. I'm gonna stay up here for five breaths. So you can actually, if you want, tuck the shoulders under, clasp the hands, push up. Adjusting the head and neck so they're not straight. You're clasping your hands, gently release. And then slowly roll down one vertebrae at a time. Knees make their way into the chest. Low back roll. Feet are placed on the mat. And usually I do really wide windshield wipers. We're going to try um, putting our feet and our knees together and doing a very tight windshield wipers. So what we do is we drop off to the left with our arms up to a T. We stay there for about one second, drop them off to the right. Continuing to do this back and forth. The next time you're over to the right side, just leave the legs there. So the gaze would go over the left shoulder and left hand. If you want to take that top, that left leg, if that feels a little bit better or you can keep it here. You can straighten that left leg just as long as you adjust the shoulder and the shoulders are on the mat. Go ahead and bend that leg if it was straightened and drop them over to the left side. So again, you can keep them where they're at. The gaze goes over the right hand or you can take that right leg out long, adjusting the shoulders, making sure the shoulders are both on the mat. Bending that knee, make your way back to center. Knees come into the chest. Legs in the air, arms go up to a T. Deciding if you want movement in this position, if you want to roll or rotate your ankles, move your legs. Possibly hamstring stretch. Or allow yourself just to enjoy your legs being in the air. They hardly ever are. Knees make their way back into the chest. Grabbing the outside of your feet, coming into happy baby. See if you can relax your shoulders a little bit in this pose. Allow yourself some movement if that feels good. Pressing down on the feet and the legs. 
streams and movement, if you'd like. Legs can go back in the air. Otherwise, this is a time for you to decide if your body needs anything else before we get into final resting pose. So Yogi's choice. So take about two and a half minutes for your the rest of your practice um, and then setting up for Shavasana. All right, let's uh, get ready for Shavasana in about another minute. As you settle in to um, Shavasana, I'm going to just do a quick body scan, starting with the face of the body. Allow your feet to relax, heavy heels, feet splayed open. Calf or calves heavy into the mat. Releasing the hips, sinking the pelvis into the mat. Backs of the hands gently placed onto the floor of the mat. Allowing your fingers just to be Shoulders surrendering, sinking into the mat, allowing your shoulders to release anything you're holding on to. Back of the head heavy into the mat, releasing the jaw, releasing the mouth, the jaw, 
softening fan.
as you make your way back into the space, go ahead and make some gentle movements with your fingers and your toes. Then some bigger movements with your body. Eventually making your way over to your right side, fetal position, stay here for a couple breaths. And when you're ready, make your way up to a seated position. Hopefully you're all there by now. says, today I'll accept where I am and continue pushing forward. If I'm in the midst of, lear of a learning experience, I will allow myself to continue with the faith that the day of mastery and, re and reward will come. Hands come to the heart. Thank you all for showing up this Friday. I really, really am. Um, and grateful for this practice in this place and all of you. If we practice in here, we do better out there. Namaste. You're welcome to go ahead and put something in the chat. If you have a question or a comment, stick around for a couple minutes or if you want to email me for any reason, I'm on the Heartland website. I love seeing all your names. That's great. Good, I'm glad, Lori. Namaste, Kayla. Have a great Friday night. I don't know what's going on, but hopefully something fun. Good to see you again, Kathy, or at least your name. Thanks for coming, Lori and Jennifer. Have a great night.